Yeah, hey, Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda, this is your first time here. Welcome to my beauty entertainment channel. Yup, that's it. So yes, welcome, have fun. Today we're doing another episode of, not, ep I don't know, I don't know. We're doing another everything wrong with today yay or not i don't i don't really know but before i do that if you would like to follow me on social media here's my twitter and my instagram you can go ahead and enjoy yourself on those platforms good luck so what is an everything wrong yes i took my nails off so i look like a child now we're ignoring we are ignoring so everything wrong with is when i basically take a tv show i watch the whole thing um usually twice to for some shows twice, for shows like America's Next Top Model, not twice. I watch a I watch an entire show and I analyze it, I talk about it, I share my opinions on it, etc, etc, etc. So I started this series out with Victorious, I did not everything wrong with Victorious, then I did not everything wrong with iCarly, then I did not everything wrong with Glee, and then I did not everything, my last one was not everything wrong with America's Next Top Model, yep. Yup, so that's what we're about to do today, and today, obviously, as you can tell from the title of the video, today's culprit, today's, ch today's choice is Grownish. So, let's get started. So I personally, I have been watching Grownish for the first, I watched it, like, as it came on for the first two seasons, because I wanted to support, oh, I wanted to support, you will get into why I thought I needed to support any of that. I wanted to support, I wanted, I wanted, I like wanted to keep up with the trend and I was watching it with my friends so we watched it every week and then we fell off for season three because, any, we fell off season three but then I just caught up season three, I just finished it like two nights ago and I have some thoughts that I would like to share. So let me first give you some background. Grownish is a spin-off of the American sitcom Blackish, which has been on for a while now. Basically follows a suburban rich black family in Los Angeles. That's it. That's what Blackish follows, but Grownish is on Freeform. Blackish is on ABC. Grownish is on Freeform, which used to be ABC Family, but is now Freeform. It had that rebrand that they didn't really market well. I don't really know what happened with that, but it's on Freeform now. The show started in 2018, like January, like I think January 3rd, like right after the new year. Started in 2018 and just wrapped up its third season and a fourth season is coming. For some reason, a fourth season is coming. Okay. So I want to read you the show's description, how the show describes itself, and I want you to walk with me. The Johnson family's eldest daughter is taking her first steps into the real world as she heads off to college. Grownish explores the first trappings of adulthood, and Zoe must navigate the trials and tribulations of these momentous steps. Zoe discovers that once she leaves the nest, things do not always go her way. The series features that in between the place where you're not quite an adult, but facing grown world problems for the first time, Kenya Barris, the show's creator and executive producer, said. So yes, Kenya Barris is the creator and executive producer of this show. The show is a nightmare. The show is a, ni a nightmare. And I won't be starting. So I'm going to start with my history of Grownish, which is pretty much anyone who's watched Grownish from season one pretty much had the same thoughts that I had with it. So when I first heard that Zoe from Blackish was going to be getting her own show, I was like, oh my god, we're going to be see a fashion girl in college, like a bitchy black girl in college. I'm like, okay, this could be something. And why was I so excited? Because of how Grownish was advertised. So how was Grownish advertised? Let's let's take a, let's take a step back in time. Let's travel back through time and remember just how this show was advertised to the public. Grownish was advertised as this cool adult-ish Grownish ha 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 TV show on Freeform. It is so I'll be saying this at least three times. It is so interesting how this show and Good Trouble started the exact same time, but took two completely different paths to talk about pretty very similar topics very very interesting uh may, they had better source material Grownish is this show about Zoe she's this bitchy she's fat she's a black fashion it girl she's gorgeous blah 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 the show was advertised as a black girl's black adventures in college 
it was a black girl's black adventures at a black at a white college a primarily white institution that is how this show was advertised and I'm sure we know by now that is not what we got this show would at was advertised as a black college a black girls black experience at a PWI why am I not seeing what what's what what where was the disconnect between between the thought the room that thought up this idea and the writers room I don't think they're in the same I don't think they're in the same building I don't you know what that would actually answer a lot of these issues if they are not in the same building if they operate at a different different buildings whatever then you know so it's advertised like that then we start to see the cast they start like casting people so we get um Yara Shahidi obviously because she was on blackish so I can't be mad at that and then we saw Nomi and I was like no okay then I saw Anam who's old I don't understand I don't understand I don't understand why we have non-college like so non-college age people playing call I don't I've never understood I've never understood that um there's a lot of young actresses who could play on his role it's not a very hard role to whatever whatever I don't need to get into that then I saw you know Trevor Jackson Jr. I was like okay saw Vivek I'm still waiting and I saw Chloe and Hallie who I love adore and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm literally looking for the rest of eternity for a dark skin girl I don't I know I was gonna give you guys more background on the show but I'm sick of the shit I'm starting I am sick of I am sick of the shit I'm sick of it what am I supposed to do with this like I'm sick of it why are there no dark skin women on your show what's going on I am so over I am so I am so over you know how exhausting it is to constantly there were new shows coming out every other day at this point with streaming services and now with this Miss Rona taking over we're gonna be seeing way more content being pumped out early and there's no dark skin girls to be found I I don't it makes no it makes no so what is not click what's not clicking what where is the di do we not ex do I not exist because that's the way it makes you feel it makes you feel like your life isn't interesting enough to get a TV show and I know it is because I'm living in a movie I am living in a movie my life is crazy I'm living in a movie you make it a move make it a movie because my life is a movie what's going on what is what what it makes it ma I just saw this is a tangent but it relates to the bigger issue of this show I just saw like two days ago on Twitter someone made a collage or like there was an article written about all the black girls that are on the Netflix originals currently not a soul not a person darker than a hamburger bun what's what's going on what what I don't I don't understand I don't get it I don't get it because they give us a black girl and I'm like okay it's no it's no longer a win it's no long it's no it never has been but it's no longer it's not a win if you give me a black girl and she is as close to white as possible as close to white you're no I didn't win there's no diversity here there's no pushing that there's none of that you haven't done anything because you literally chose the safest option what what's I don't under I don't get it I don't I'm it's something that makes no it it really bugs me it really drives me nuts in fact I could go like this is not what this whole video was about so I'm gonna like stop soon but this is the one of the biggest and most fundamental issues that I have with Gronish how dense do you have to be to make a show about college you have every single counterpart you have a white girl you have a Latina girl you have a light skin girl you have a brown where is the dark skin counterpart two plus two, you have every there's everyone else almost everyone else represent what happened to us what happened to do we not go to college do we not go to co it's alarming it's frankly concerning at the and that's why what I, I should have known I should have I should have known from episode one I should have known what path the show was gonna take because it doesn't get any better it doesn't get any better from looking at a picture of the cast it doesn't the picture of the cast tells you all you need to know about this show and I'm infuriated again so this is a separate issue 
but that thing that collage that Netflix collage that I saw I literally was like I literally cannot express how tired I am I it's it's I can't put it into words how there's a new Netflix show coming out every 15 seconds you create how do you you create an entire cast of people a whole cast you look at the cast and you go to the it's the it's the best friend character because we can't be we can't lead a movie we can't lead a tv show i don't know what 10 minutes in and i'm i haven't even gotten to this i don't care you light is all what's going on you're not doing what you think you're doing but you're like okay we're gonna put a black girl in but she's gonna literally look to as close as white as we can possibly get you are not doing what you think you're, you're you're not doing what you think you're doing you're not because this show thinks it's doing a lot it thinks it's breaking the table shaking it shattering the glass you're doing nothing you're doing absolutely nothing and we could tell from the moment your cast was announced it's this is alarming this is an this is a, this is alarming <clears throat> i don't get i don't get on a show that is advertised supposed to it was ever as a black show a black girl's black adventures at a white college you have a white girl and a republican cuban girl before you have a dark skin character i don't i don't under i don't understand i on as a republican you she's on the show before a dark skin girl ever comes anywhere near the set It's nuts. I don't get, because we got a dark skin girl. She's not even, so Ryan Dest, the one, the only, the only, because no one's face looks like, it's a, oh wow, a face. Ryan Destiny is now on the show. She seems like a minor character at this point. They, she's been on, so listen, they told me she was going to be on the show. I was like, okay, I'll watch the show because I love Ryan Destiny. Go watch it on the screen maybe four times maybe four times on the screen for the whole third season and I was like you just completely bamboozled me you got me you got me I should have known I should have known she's Luca's new girlfriend um we don't know anything besides her name her name is Jillian I think we know nothing else about her and she's into film there's absolutely no that we are given nothing we're given nothing for any of these characters I'll get into that later but for her we don't know anything about her she's just Luca's girlfriend a prop but it, did, it took until season three it took until your only fans I don't even know who really be watching the show like that basically harassing you and being like put a dark skin girl on this show how is there not I don't know what's going on and I should have known if you watch blackish I, I should have known the way that Diane is pro the black the dark skin um the, like the little girl on that show she's not little anymore but she started off the show little one of the twins the way they portray her on that show uh, we all should I should have known I should have known she's evil they literally call her evil they call her mean she is scary what is not there's no I know there's no black woman in, involved I know there's not I, what is not what like do you I don't think this is a thing it's I don't no one understands how exhausting it is to see another show about teenhood or a young adulthood or college or whatever and not to not see yourself represented again again every single time there is a new Netflix original literally every single day about teen angst set in an ambiguous time period set in an ambiguous country with a white main lead with an ambiguous best friend I'm over it I'm over it I do, there's no there's no there's no like um I, ca I can't I can't do any I can't say anything anymore that is that is it fe it's like do we not come of age too like what someone give me I know there's some shows a show a coming of age show featuring a dark skinned black girl I know black lightning is one it has China and McLean in it that's all I can think of uh why are we what what always i can't 
it's like do we not come of age do we not have the same like sort of like got like weird teenage period like because i know you guys think we're 17 and we're six years old. i know you guys think that but please please i would love to, i would love to see my college experience or my high school experience i don't want to see that again but i would love to see that could be and the thing is i'm like do you not think people will watch it I, that's my thing we saw with To All The Boys I Ever Loved Before, people thought that an Asian woman being a lead in a romance movie wouldn't do well. That is Netflix's cash cow. That is Netflix's cash cow, that movie. Or what's not clicking? What is not clicking? I have to move on. Anyway, so that is the my biggest and um, fundamental issue with Grownish is how they don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. And they, instead of bringing in a dark skin girl until season three, they use Chloe and Hallie as the dark skin characters when they are not dark by any means, by any means, any respect, they're not dark skin, but they are treated as such because compared to everyone else, they are the darkest on the ship. Makes no sense. I have to move, I have to move on. Yeah, that's my big, that's the fundamental issue with grown-ups that I can't, and that's why I can't, I can't watch this, I can't enjoy this show. So I don't see my, whatever. So. This is then now on my second fundamental issue with Gronish. They think they're doing a lot. They think they're doing a whole lot of nothing is the thing. They are tricking themselves into thinking they're producing quality. No, it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of nothing. It's a whole lot of fluff. Here, let's 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 walk with me. The only people that would find this not to be fluff are like white people who have to be the target audience for this. Be, why, would you why would you advertise it the way you did if we're not the target audience, whatever. We see this. Grownish has had tried multiple, multiple times to have deep conversations about stuff and every time they crash and burn, every time they fail to actually turn the conversation into a conversation. They always drop the ball. What they're shallow, there's no real meaning, and they always end with some ridiculous joke that a 35 year old probably wrote. There's no way anyone under the age of 25 writes this show. There's no, there's no way. The way it's the, the no, nothing, they take everything from Twitter and they're not taking it in context. So it makes no sense. It makes, it makes no sense. We're going to start with my app. The, um, so I don't want this video to be super simple. I'm using one main example. It's enough. There's enough in here for me to unpack. It is the, um, colorism, racism. It's the dating hierarchy episode from season one. That's what I want to use because this episode was one of the most infuriating episodes of television in history. It for me, for me, you can just, it's one of the most infuriating episodes to watch that I've ever seen. We're going to start. So if you don't remember this episode at all, I will literally just explain it to you. You don't need to go rewatch it. I mean, you can, but it's 20 minutes long. It won't take very long. There's no substance. It'll fly. Literally, you'll be like, oh my God, the episode's over already. Oh, I didn't learn anything. Okay. So they're at this club bar place near their school. Makes no sense. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So Chloe and Hallie are, there's the name, they're Sky and Jazz on the show. They're explaining to Vivek, Nomi, Anna, and Aaron what it's like to date as a black woman at a PWR. They're basically explaining the dating politics and the dating hierarchy and how it's different for black men and black women, our experiences in terms of dating in college. There are differences. That is the least they could do is address those differences and they barely, barely scratch at that surface. I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone for now. They then start discussing this and then they turn to Aaron and they get on him for the fact that he only dates light skinned women. <sighs> of course he, of course he does. Of course he does. And him being himself, he gets super, super defensive and then he runs away. Come, we'll come back. We'll come back to this. You'll see where this comes in at the, towards the end. They then insinuate, then what the rest of the girl, then, um, Sky, no, Jazz sends back a drink. She's Chloe's character. Um, sends back a drink and then all of them are like, maybe that's why black girls don't get any attention because y'all have an attitude. I don't understand why we had, to, I don't understand why we had to do that. I don't get why we had to do that. What, what, what did we gain from bringing up the, why did we gain 
from bringing that up again. Instead of, and then when they did that, when they said you have an attitude, there was no discussion. They literally just told her, we think you're a bitch. And then Jazz was like, know me, you send back more drinks. Know me is Caucasian. You send back more drinks than anyone. And there was nothing else done. We didn't even, how do your, how does your friend basically just microaggress you at a different level and there's nothing said. There's nothing, nothing was learned. No, nothing was it made, okay, that, that's not even the biggest issue here. Then we get Vivek who comes in and is like, I love black women, blah, 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 blah. Then he goes, you know, into the shit of, I, I like to sleep with one eye open. I want my woman to scare me, that. And then they have to ignore that. I understand why they, I don't, I wouldn't want them to talk about that either. That's just, that's just annoying. Then Sky goes up to a black guy in the club, Diggy's character, and who's always with white women. Like it's getting weird. He's always with white women and asks him why he's not checking for any black girls. And then he's like, I do it cause I can with the smug attitude that nobody asked for. So that we'll, we'll be back to this as well. Oh, this is, this is all alarming. Then, so we're back to Aaron. So what has Aaron done in this time that they are been having this conversation? He goes and finds the darkest black woman in the bar and uses her as a prop. He goes and finds this one, this poor girl, this poor girl, goes and finds her, brings her to his friends and like, here, I love dark skinned women. He literally goes and finds the darkest person in the club, shoves her in front of his friends and says, here, what do you mean I don't like dark skinned women? I just found her five, can't, doesn't know her name, doesn't know where she's from, doesn't know anything about her, using her as a prop. What is the, and we gloss over it. That's the most, that is the most interesting part. They gloss over it. There could have been a whole colorism conversation could have actually happened, but nothing happened. Nothing, nothing happened beyond that. He brings in this dark woman as a prop. They laugh it up and they go to the next scene. Where is the intellectual conversation this show is supposed to be starting? Where, where, where is it? Because now they just, they literally end that scene with them laughing at him, but there's no... There's no conversation about why what he's doing is wrong, how it's something that is very common. Nothing. Nothing happens. No. Kiss my ass. I don't, it makes no, then that's the first dark skin woman we see on this show. The first dark skin woman we see on this show is used as a prop for Aaron to prove that he's not colorist or infatuated with light skin women only. I, I don't, I don't even know, I don't, I don't know, I don't. And while they're having all these conversations about privilege and dating privileges, no one thinks to bring up the prime walking example of this that would have proven the point and actually taken this conversation into a conversation, how Zoe is having a different experience than the rest of them due to her exoticness. That is something that they actually could have gone there with. That is something that they even like teased at bringing up, but they didn't bring it up. They didn't bring up the privilege that comes with Zoe looking the way she, that nothing, nothing happened. They could have literally proven their point, but the writers didn't know that that was a point to be proven. They didn't, they didn't get that. They didn't get that that is a point that could have literally been your entire argument is Zoe's college experience. Could have been, could have, could have been evidence for your entire point. But the, what's, what's, that's what makes me believe there is, there are no young black people, there are no young black women writing this show. That your entire point is right there and you just completely, completely, completely glossed over, whatever. This episode, this, uh, this episode like gets me like mad. Anyway, so then this whole conversation is very, very surface level. It's literally how I think this show is read. I think they have like six, twi I think they go on Twitter. But here's the thing, I think they go on Twitter in like 2014. I don't know how they would do that, but all their episodes seems like they read a Twitter thread from 2014 and wrote an entire script based on six tweets. Or does anyone else understand what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, in 2014, 2015, 2016, there were, there were always threads explaining like why things are wrong. Like there's not, there's still some now, but like we've done all that before. We like, that's why I was like, 
I don't feel like explaining again why Nikita Dragon can't wear box braids like there's so much information on that on the internet and a lot of it is in simple words on Twitter from like 2015 it seems like they found those threads like five years later and still think they're sufficient enough to hold a conversation you look stupid the show is stupid. You're making us, you're playing us to be fools. And on Freeform, that's my thing. This feels like a children's show. I'm gonna get into, this show feels like a children's show. Let me continue. So then, this is, this is where we get, we get, I'm gonna take a sip of water. So this whole conversation is surface level. And then at the end of the episode, the guy that, um, Sky like went up and asked like why aren't you checking for black girls at the end of the episode the guy comes over and like apologizes to them first of all when would that happen when would that happen this is not a fantasy show this is not a show set in alternate something has to be realistic about this show that would never ever happen but I digress like them being able to afford that them living in this nice ass house their junior year even that apartment their sophomore year that was one thing this is completely unrealistic this would never have you been to a cop this would never happen him coming over to apologize that would never happen but I, I digress here is this supposed to resolve the issue? Is this supposed to resolve and finish the conversation on dating politics and hierarchy? Is this him going up to her and apologizing for her? Is that supposed to erase everything that, that that's ever happened to her? All of the institutional things that these that black women experience at college? Is, that, is this supposed to just like negate it? Him giving this half-ass apology? What is that supposed to do for me? What is that supposed to do for me? What is that supposed to resolve in terms of the episode? What is supposed to what is supposed to happen? They 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 started in this episode alone, which is like a 23 minute episode, they, there is no message. They start, they start a bunch of conversations, but they don't finish them. So they're they're not conversations, they're whispers. They're like literal fragments. They are liter they are nothing. There's, it's, there's nothing there. Look, let's look at what, 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 what do they look at? Aaron's colorism, explaining the dating hierarchy and dating politics at PWIs, interracial dating and the differences that black women and black men experience, all of these conversations conversation started and nothing was finished holes holes there are holes all over all over the script and do you know why it's because the writers don't know how to fill they don't know how to finish the conversation which brings me to my next issue put but put cha fire the writing room and start fresh fire I, at the end of this I'm gonna be talking about how I think Gronish can fix it how I think they can fix it, the th fire the writing room. How they, cause I don't think they know how to finish these conversations. I don't think they have the um, knowledge in whoever is writing this or creating this. I don't think they know how to finish these conversations. And it's really, really frustrating to see cause it's like they really think they're doing it. They really, this episode, they thought they like conquered dating politics and colorism. Like they legit, they were like, they advertised the hell out of this episode too. And I was like, you should bury this. You should bury, bury this up. This should have never happened. This should have never, ever, ever happened. And they've tried multiple times to circle back to some of these um, topics in further episodes. Every time it's a crash and burn. Every time they don't know what the hell, every time they try to start it back up, it doesn't work because they don't know where they're going. They are unable to figure out a way to actually have the conversation because in order to actually have these conversations, they would need to stop playing it safe. They would actually have to push the envelope and I don't think they want to do I think they want to keep this show as safe as possible, which is why this is a children's show. <laughs> Now on to just the characters because um, they're also a big reason. Um, God bless these actors' hearts. They're working with very, very little. I because I actually think like none of these none of, none of them can act and my none of them can really act. But I think some are better than others. I just think they're given no material. Like they're given nothing to work with. Give like we don't I, give them something to work. Whatever. 
Zoe is not a likable person. Zoe is a terrible person, in fact. She is self-centered, she is annoying, she is rude, and it seems that she's aware of all this, she just doesn't care. And that's more alarming to me, that she's completely aware of the fact that she is a self-centered ego egomaniac, and she does not, she's a jackass, she is rude. Bless Yara's heart, but this character is awful, and she can't act. So it's just, it's like a double-edged, so we lose, it's a lose lose situation like you're already setting the show up by having her being the main character it's it's nuts she's just pretty that's a thing as told by Kenya she made I think either two or three grown videos I don't know but in one of them she brought up something that I don't people kept like not talking about in terms of Zoe's character she is walking pretty privilege she is her only redeeming quality about her is the fact that she's pretty she's an asshole she's a terrible friend she only cares about herself she doesn't care about anyone else's feelings but she's pretty that is supposed that is supposed to redeem her to the audience is the fact that she is dropped because the RGD is dropped dead. let's let's not I'm not gonna lie here she's very very pretty it's the same bull as a different world nobody likes characters like Denise or Zoe that's why a different world went in a different direction that is why did we not learn from their mistake did we not learn that characters like Denise and Zoe who are very similar cannot carry a show they can't lead a show like it's it's ridiculous and Aaron is basically a hotep he's gotten better but especially season one he did very very hotep behavior um, nobody wants that in their life Anna is a Republican that is enough said that is uh, that is enough said what what is necessary about her character what is this supposed to add like political diversity because nobody cares i nobody cares nobody who watches the shows cares nobody who watches the show cares i don't know what is this supposed what do you think republicans watch the show that's my question like i don't n none of it makes any sense whatever Nomi, to me, isn't that bad of a character. I actually kind of like her. She would say some stuff sometimes and, you know, just do stuff. But, um, she wasn't that bad to me. And then they ruined her character by, spoiler, she gets, she's pregnant. I don't know whose idea that was, but it was ridiculous I would say it ruined her character but she didn't have much character development to ruin anyway her character was pretty much going nowhere for two seasons just like all over the place she was doing she was like doing whatever she want she was like having sex with her teacher it was a bit she was it was it was a whole lot of mess so I couldn't even say that they ruined her character because there was nothing to ruin whatever Luca is a very mediocre character there's nothing really special about him he just is like he says funny things sometimes so like whatever and then Vivek Vivek is used as a as a prop as a comedic prop and it's ridiculous it's very very interesting how the Asian man and the darker black woman on the show both don't get anything on the show Sky and Jazz didn't get anything until season two Jazz got Doug Doug is that his name it's Diggy Simmons but I don't I think it's Doug I think it's Doug on the show I think I think it's Doug on the show she got him and Jack and then Sky just got um her white boyfriend like three episodes ago but they don't but they none of none of them none of the three of them get anything anything in this show they're not given any good writing they're not given any actual scenes to themselves they're not given any sort of development they're not given any sort of flesh out that, that we don't we know nothing we know nothing about any of these characters but we know nothing about Vivek and Sky and Jazz then like if Vivek was allowed to talk if if he was allowed to talk and actually explain his life, I would be very interested because the four, the literal four details that they had given us about Vivek are actually quite interesting. I would like to actually know more. Like they've literally told us three things. We know three things about Vivek. He's a drug dealer. Um, his dad is a cab driver. And he does really well in school. That's all we knew. What, what, where? Give us something else, something more. And then we have Sky and Jazz, the twins, even though they look nothing alike, whatever. Um, it's telling how the darkest women on the show are ghetto and loud and sassy or whatever. Pretty sure they're described by their own friends as loud and sassy and rude and, you know, aggressive. 
you are currently here's the thing with grown-ups they are so they're not self-aware you are perpetuating the stereotypes in tv that you are claiming to discuss and erase it makes it's mind-blowing how you can be so unaware of <laughs> it's how how are you the show is supposed to be this show discussing social issues, getting it right, having the real conversations. And this is what you do to do the black woman on your show. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm like, do you guys watch your show? Like, do you? Cause you are literally perpetuating these stereotypes and the caricatures of black women in TV that you claim to be trying to fix makes no sense. Make it make, it doesn't. You can't make it make sense. Then we have Ryan Destiny's character who's a minor character, I think. She's been on the screen three times. Um, I would like to see more since she's out acting a lot of your main characters. I would like to see more of her, but you know what, whatever, I digress. There's other characters, but I don't care. I don't care, I'm talking about the main ones. So back to the issues with this show. Cause that was the, those are the characters there's issues with that but the show so the show needs to give it up needs to give it up trying to be this blackity black show like we're exhausted why are you guys doing a homecoming episode with two black people on your show two black women on your show three i don't know i don't remember two oh there's twin three i didn't like that I didn't like that. I don't know how Beyonce gave him the credit for that. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. They tried to market themselves as the modern, a different world with three black people on this. What's going on? What is, I, I like, it's like an out of body experience. They remade a different world's theme song, terrorism. Call it what it is. Call it domestic terrorism. That was apps. That was offensive to every fiber. I love a different world. I love, uh, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that. I, anyways, you are not that. You are not, you, if you're not going to have real fleshed out conversations about black issues and may bring black people onto your show more, you can't, you're not allowed. And this is the thing. If you act, Freeform would let you do this. Freeform has produced some really real, Freeform, ABC Family have produced some really, really good, sh what's not clicking? What is not clicking? If you are going to, like they, they are pandering to, it's like, this is for white people. This show, every time I watch it, I'm just like, this show is not, like I'm supposed to be the target audience cause I started college when this show started i'm supposed to be the target audience and this show was ridiculous to me this show it's not made it's not made for me it claims to but it's not they put a dark skin girl on the show in season three in season three they incorporate twitter slang out of context so it makes no sense i don't think people understand that you can't just look you can't just take look at someone's tweet it got like a hundred thousand retweets so like you're like, okay oh this okay like okay this is funny and then just throw it in a script with absolutely no context that's not how this works it's like she's got to have it on netflix which i can't watch anymore that is a more extreme case, but Gronish does it too. Incorporating just too much. I'm like, you're not even using the words correctly. So please stop, please stop. Then it makes me think what the median age of these, of the, what, what the average age, what the mean age of these writers is. It has to be 28. It has to be, there's the average age has to be, because there's no way, there's no way a writer's room with an average age of around 20, like any younger, would be writing. I would say maybe even 30. There's no way. Like it oh, they can't write a script and they can't write characters. They can't their characters to are seem like shells of people, if that makes sense. They don't seem real. They seem strip we have we don't know them. We don't know anything about them. And that's what makes me think this is a children's show. We don't know 
anything about these characters really. The closest we've seen to them like actually being raw and real since it's supposed to be a raw and real college show is during Nomi's pregnancy but like that was cut short since she's in labor now that's how the season ended and she left it makes it makes no sense and let me tell you something sweetheart i don't understand i don't know how y'all do shit where you from but let me tell you something where i'm from we don't do shit like that and so now we're at how to fix it um so zoe can't lead a show the character is you completely boring and the thing is there is nothing um, there is nothing redeemable about her besides that she's pretty that would gain anyone's interest in knowing more about her. I don't care to know more about Zoe. She's annoying and she's rude. Mo, like, she's rude and sh it's ridiculous. She should be a minor character. She gives me, you know what she gives me? She gives me Mean Girl on a Disney show. That, that is what, she gives me Mean Girl on a Disney show who comes in for one scene and episode and makes fun of Hannah Montana's accent. She is an Amber or an Ashley. She, you know, I was gonna say Bonnie. Bonnie from Kim Possible is more, is a more flushed out character than Zoe, so I can't even say that. She's a mean girl. She's a mean girl on a Disney Channel show. That's ridiculous. And she's supposed to lead this entire show. So the quickest and most efficient way to make this show better is to make her a minor character. They're not gonna do that, obviously, it's her show, but she did, she is dropping out of school apparently next season. Um, so maybe they might be, but I, 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 whatever, it doesn't make any sense. What they could do is follow Dear White People's bl um, Blueprint where they have an episode for every character because this is their their last chance to start stealing ideas. Sorry. Listen, they've given us three seasons of absolutely nothing. Of absolutely nothing. An eight-year-old can watch this show if you took out the cursing and took out the sex scenes. This is a show that could be on Disney Channel if you took out the cursing and took out the sex scenes. It could be. This is freeform, usually takes us there. Freeform slash ABC Family usually takes us there. The Fosters was on this channel. Pretty Little Liars was on this channel. What's Not Clicking? Good Trouble, which I cannot trust enough, started at the exact same time this show is. It is so interesting to see the different paths the show has taken. Good Trouble had better source material. The Fosters is an incredible show. Way better show than Blackish. It's very, it might be because the Fosters goes deeper than black it like the fosters was better at talking about things than blackish ever could be in my opinion blackish it is does the same thing grownish does with just very surface level and they had a colorism episode on blackish that was in i don't even i don't know what's going on i don't that though there was a colorism episode of blackish now i remember I should have known. I know their colorism episode came after Grown Ashes, I think. Don't watch it if you haven't seen it. Maybe you could. It starts off with light skin tears and like 15, like 10 minutes of light skin tears. Um, so that's all I really need to say. And then they don't even like, Di they don't even let Diane, the darkest person on the show, they don't even let her talk. They literally interrupt her and talk over her as if she's what it makes there is no self-awareness there is no self-awareness anywhere near these two shows but i'm talking about grownish so since you've given us three seasons of nothing you need to stop wasting my time and you need to squeeze three seasons worth of flushing out of characters into single 30 minute episodes for each character save yourself save yourself this is the life preserver this is the life preserver you need to make you need you need to do this you need to do this you need to give them each an episode and flush out their character because your show can't go anywhere now the fact that this show could there's no path i don't think they even really know what they want to do with it there's no path this show is not going anywhere it's not end it end it or make some very very drastic changes they need to i want vivek to get an episode i want him to get his episode second i want it i want no me i want it in this order i want no me vivek sky and jazz and then aaron anna can get an episode if she wants to but they need to first 
have an entire episode addressing the fact that on is a conservative ass Republican. Let's start. They're just okay with this. They're not there. Have you been to a college? Have you been to a college, especially at this time? At this time, nobody is kumbaya like that. Nobody, nobody like across party lines, we don't, nobody kumbaya is like that. Nobody does that. Nobody just ignores the fact that their friend supports beliefs that basically deny the existence of half of people in her, in her friend group. That's, and they're just ignoring it. And Anna's always saying some slick, racist, microaggressive shit. She's always saying it. Why is no, like, Sky and Jazz will clock her and then get called aggressive in literally three minutes. <laughs> That's what happens on this show. Anna will say something racist. Sky or Jazz or both in a tit for twin moment will come at her um, correctly. And then Anna will be like, y'all are being mean to me. She'll be like, you guys are bullying me. You're bullying me because you don't like my beliefs. Exactly. 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 You don't believe that I should exist. Why shouldn't I bully you? <laughs> what? What? It's like high school all over. I don't understand. I don't understand. So she needs to get an episode to her explaining that. They have to, are they going to never, you know, they're probably never going to address it, whatever. Is Doug, is Sky's boyfriend a main character or not? Is he a main character or not? You cannot have it both ways. Pick a side, pick a side, pick a side, pick a side. You can't have it both ways. Is he a main character or is he the funny best friend? You pick one. We can't, we can't have him double dip it. We can't be doing that. It's ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. So this show has gotten slightly, slightly, slightly better. I mean, it's not hard to like be better than garbage. So as the show's gone on, the last season that I just watched a couple days ago, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't as bad as I think the first season was. It got better. And the finale of this last season is probably their best episode to date, I think. First, I want to give it up for hair, makeup, and costume design for the season three finale. Exquisite work. Exquisite work. It was like a 90s party. They all looked good as hell. Wow. But it was, the episode was pretty much useless. It was like plain yogurt. It was, it was absolutely, nothing happened, but it wasn't bad. Bare, bare minimum. Then also this season they had an episode talking about student loans and like how um, college is super expensive, but it was a very surface level conversation. I was like, they started a conversation about how student loans and banks prey on first generation low income college students, especially black students. They prey on them because they know they can't afford to go to college. Like, here's this big loan. It's all, they started that conversation and went nowhere with it again it is literally like they took they saw a twitter thread from 2015 very like um explaining this um how student loans work and how they prey on marginalized people but it was explained in like three tweets it looks like they saw those three tweets and wrote it into an entire script and i i really i really it's it's weird it's getting it's getting weird it's getting weird. It's, 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 it's not, this is nothing. This is not right. What it's, it's weird. It is weird. Here's my thing. If, if get some younger people into the writing room and if they're already, cause there could very well be young people in there, find some cooler ones. I don't know what, I don't know what else to tell you because your show is done. It is done for unless some very, very drastic, drastic, needed change to start happening. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Why, you know, in high school, like, you know, like the white girl, not even high school, high school, college, all of a sudden, 
you know the white girls that will like like you'll be they'll be like conversation about race and they'll be like a man they'll be like I got this and start talking over you because they like read a Twitter thread explaining what like cultural appropriation was and they'll start like talking over you and be like I got this I know what racism is let me go, let me get one for the girls go like they'll do that it seems like that's who's in this writing room people the top white women talking over it's what it's what this it's what this writing room is giving me and it should that can't that can't be happening that can't be happening I, I can't we can't this is unacceptable this is unacceptable whatever and then back to my this is this show is a children's show if they did not curse and didn't have sex scenes or talk about sex this show could be shown on Disney Channel that is ridiculous that who it is mind-blowing I am their target audience I, that's that's that is what's nuts I was in my freshman year of college when this show started I was their exact target audience and I think this show is childish I think this show is childish as all hell I think this show is very surface level doesn't get anywhere it actually wants to get how am I a 19 year old student who's supposed to relate to these people how do I find your show childish? This show is for children. This show is for 10 year olds. This show would do better on Disney Channel. This show would do better on Disney Plus. This show would do better anywhere else. And I don't, you're on free form. You're on free form. Free form has produced quality. Free form has produced excellent quality. Where is the disconnect? where it's so it's getting weird there's no subs it's really and it's like good trouble started the exact same time i'm pretty sure the week after this show started good trouble started what's i don't get it that show is doing so well that show is doing so well they but they had better source material i so we're in a constant cycle of chaos of chaos because they did have far 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 better the fosters and blackish please 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 so i guess that's probably the reason why but like you wanted me to root for you because you were supposed to be this black black show showing the black experience at a pwi which was which could have been very very interesting and then you just you just have done nothing with it something has to change something has to change and it's got to change before your show gets canceled i don't know who's watching this show actually actually it was me <laughs> it was me and my friends watching it every week because we wanted so desperately for the show to turn into what it advertised itself as because guess what we have nothing else black women have nothing else what other shows am i i, I don't see myself in this show but there's no other shows that have any like like Chloe and Hallie are, are, are probably the darkest people on TV right now like teenage besides China and McLean and Black Lightning um, that's a good show too they probably are the darkest um, young here's my thing young like an actress under the age of 25 that's what I'm talking about cuz yeah there are black, there are like 30 year old millennial black women and stuff. There are children and stuff. What about the rest? What about us? I don't see myself on TV ever. I don't see myself in movies ever. It's getting weird. It's been, you know what? It is weird. We're at weird. I don't like this. I don't like this. This show needs to, something needs to change. Dress. I'm talking about, a, I'm talking about maybe an entire rebrand. I think they're gonna have to do what a different world did and get rid and, get, and cut, cut cut it cut it off cut the cord you're done but that probably won't happen anytime soon so yeah I'll just stop talking now so um yup that was my long extended rant on Gromish thank you so much for watching so yeah that's the end of my video um Gromish gives me a headache so I'm gonna go lay down yeah that's the end of my video um thank you guys so much for watching this was another installment of the everything wrong series yay 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 so yeah 
Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you would like to follow me on social media, here is my Twitter and my Instagram. Again, go enjoy yourselves, have so much fun. While you're here, you could also subscribe if you're feeling frisky or whatever. Um, also, you check out some of my recent videos. I have a playlist of all my everything wrong with over here, probably, and then another video. Go watch it if you're coming. I mean, you're doing nothing else, so do that. Um, secondly, please wash your hands. Keep hygiene up. Um, yeah. Just be doing that, you know, take care of yourself, stay healthy. Stop buying toilet paper, stuff, you know, stuff, common sense stuff. Just like, let's keep that in mind as we deal with the situation. So yeah, thank you guys so, so very much for watching me and my content. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye bye.